Good morning, guys. Today we're going to do something fun. We're going to learn how to operate a camera. Um, so if everybody could get out their cameras that they either brought with them or come up to the front, I have some up here that you guys can use as well. I just want to make sure that everybody has a camera. Today we're going to be going through the different operations, and so I want to make sure that you guys have a camera with you uh, so you can be following along physically doing the operations that we're talking about um, so you can get used to the feel and um, just just be able to, to tangibly see what I'm talking about up here. So first, uh, we're going to talk about the focus. The focus is um, on the farthest part out from the body of the camera on the lens. Um, so you can see here in the picture, um, the zoom is first and then farther out um, is the focus. And so what we're going to do first um, is find something that you want to film and then zoom in on that. And of course, it's probably going to look blurry. And so next, take that little focus ring on the outside of the lens and turn it until it comes into focus. And with that, um, now that it's in focus, you can zoom back out and you can see that it stays in focus. Um, if it's not so in focus, you may want to check the back focus. Um, and I can show you what that is. That's a little screw on the right side of the lens that may be off. And so if you zoom all the way in and make it focused, and then slowly zoom back out, you can see it might start getting out of focus at a certain point. And so if, that, if that's the case, take that little screw, unscrew it a little bit, and then turn that to the right or the left until it gets into focus at that point. And then you can keep zooming out, and if it gets out of focus again, just turn that little screw to the right or the left uh, until you see it get back into focus. And that's adjusting your back focus, which basically will tell the camera to stay focused on that thing that you're zoomed in on. Does that make sense? Sweet. Now everybody's focused up. We'll go to the second thing. Talking about the iris now. The iris is, depending on your camera, will be the closest, the ring closest to the body of the camera on the lens. Um, if you have a DSLR, you probably will not have an iris ring. Um, and so you can put it either on auto iris um, or go into your settings um, to make it um, either adjusted for an outside lighting, inside lighting, um, or darker light as the case may be. Um, but on these Samsung cameras, there's an iris ring that you can manually adjust. You can also set it on auto iris, but personally, I don't think auto iris does a very good job. So. Um, I traditionally stick on manual iris for everything that I do and I suggest you do the same um, to make sure that your video looks the best um, in the final product. Um, so you guys can play with that. Um, it's kind of a rule of thumb. If it's too bright, then turn it right. That's something that you guys um, can hopefully remember and uh, um, just use and, and store in your memory there. Uh, essentially what the iris is doing is it's allowing the, the lens to let more or less light into the camera um, as what's needed. So you can see here in the picture on the left, um, the picture on the right, uh, the little circle on the right, is when the iris is closed. Um, and so at this point it's not letting very much light in at all, and so it's probably very dark. Um, the second shot here is uh, when the iris is more open, so it's letting more light in. Um, and so you can just, it just depends on the time of day, um, how much light you'll need to let in the iris. Um, but obviously if it's a bright sunny day, you probably don't need to have it very open. But if it's, you know, getting dark or in, you're in a room like this, you probably will have to open the iris up more and let more light in to make the shot look better. Next we're going to talk about rule of thirds. Um, and so you can see in your viewfinder that your screen is, um, separated by four different lines, two horizontal and two vertical. Um, as you see in the picture here, um, this is the ideal framing for how you want your shots. Um, so you can see this guy is the subject and he is on one of these vertical lines. Um, something important too is if you look at his face, especially his eyes, his eyes are pointing towards um, where there is more room in the frame. This is called leading room. It helps your viewers to um, just feel more natural when they're watching. Um, it feels more comfortable for him to be looking into space rather than if he was on the left side of the frame, he'd just be looking off the screen and you're like, well, what's over there? Why is he looking over there? And so this just helps your, your viewer to feel more comfortable and makes it seem more natural. Um, and so when you're shooting, 
um, try to focus on especially the vertical lines um, to match your, your subject up um, and frame them up in this way. This makes your shots mo most visually appealing. If I can be talking about uh, the different types of shots that you can be getting for your videos. Um, they're all listed here and there's obviously some other ones too but these are the, the six main ones that we'll be talking about. Um, the first one is this extra wide. Um, this is an establishing shot, you know, letting the audience see where they are. Um, so if you're at like a crime scene, get a wide shot of, you know, with the whole car accident in there and all that stuff um, to establish the scene and, and let the audience know where they are. Um, second is the wide shot. This can be still an establishing shot, but also introduce the subject um, from a distance. The medium shot is just a subject, usually um, waist up. Um, so it's, that's traditionally used for an interview or um, just if you want to be able to see more um, emotion um, with a person's hands um, or face. Um, a tight shot is, you know, here it's using his feet. It's traditionally used um, on a person's face to see emotion, see like wrinkles or like them smiling. Um, but it can be used for feet. It's also used for people's hands to show what they're doing. Um, or just a tight shot on, you know, whatever it is, <laughs> whatever your subject is. But for this, this scenario, we'll talk about people. Um, an extra tight shot is really close up. So that could be, you know, really tight on someone's face or you know, even like on their eyes um, just to show more emotion. And then finally, we have bird's eye view. Um, this is not used as much just because their, their shots are hard to get, um, but it's looking down on your subject. Um, and so this can be used to just give a different perspective um, on what you're filming so your audience can just see something different. And it adds a lot of variety. It's a really cool shot, but again, it is hard to get. Um, so with that, we're going to go out and we're going to try um, to do this stuff out in the real world now. Um, you guys will split into groups and we'll be filming um, just some, some different shots like this, um, adjusting the iris, working with the focus and the zoom, of course. Um, and we'll, we'll bring it all back in, and I'll see what you guys have shot. All right, let's get to it.